If you're here, it's probably because you're tired of your emails getting lost in the spam abyss. I get it, it's very frustrating. But the good news, I've got some tried and true strategies to help you avoid the spam folder and make sure that your emails reach your audience loud and clear. In this video, we'll talk a lot about email deliverability and not getting into spam or getting out of spam if unfortunately you already got there. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Casey. I run Luck & Co Agency and my team and me help eight and nine figure e-commerce brands maximize their revenue from email and SMS. On this channel, I share our learnings, findings, experiments, and best tips all for free or actually not exactly for free i do ask you for your like in return and if you're feeling especially generous today a short comment as well go on please say hi to me in the comments and right after you're done let's dive in are my emails going to spam how to find out your email service provider, ESP, can show you stats on hard bounces, soft bounces, and blocked emails. But what happens when your emails do get delivered, yet end up in the spam folder? How would you even know? From your side, everything might seem fine. You're probably already planning your next campaign. With your subscriber, you're just another email lost in the sea of spam that they quickly select and delete. One thing that's important to understand, just because an email went to the spam in your inbox doesn't mean that it went to spam for all recipients. And again, if it went to spam for most of the recipients, you might still get it in your inbox. And we get scared messages from our brand owners every now and then asking what happened, why did they get the email that we sent recently in their spam folder. So the first thing that you need to do at this point is look at your open rate. If your open rate is as high as it usually is, then big picture, everything's fine. Let me give you a concrete example. For most brands that we work with, the regular open rate hovers around 50%. If we see an open rate of 40% or lower, something's off. That's when we know we need to investigate. And of course, if your open rate is 10% or lower, your email definitely went to spam. The next level of investigation would be looking at the open rate by inbox provider. Your email service provider should share reports like that. Look at the open rate specifically for Gmail, G Suite, Microsoft, and other popular inboxes. It does happen that a sender can get unfavored by one of the inbox providers. And so reports that show you open rate by the inbox provider are very helpful in this case. Next up, we'll be talking about email verification. And that's a perfect cue for the sponsor of today's video. Bouncer is the go-to solution for email verification. Bouncer goes beyond the ordinary by verifying even the unverifiable. Those tricky email addresses that other tools struggle with or automatically flag as risky, Bouncer handles the majority of them with ease, ensuring no valid address slips through the cracks. Plus, Bouncer is led by real caring people. They understand your challenges and have built a solution that's both powerful and trustworthy. With Bouncer, you can verify your email list in bulk, making sure your emails actually land in inboxes. No more wasted efforts on invalid addresses or worrying about your sender reputation. Whether your mailing list is big or small, Bouncer will clean it on the spot. That's not all though. Bouncer is super secure, backed by SOC2 compliance, ensuring your data stays safe. It's trusted by businesses worldwide for being reliable and easy to use. Sign up today at bouncer.com and get started with free credits. And make sure that you say hi from me to the Bouncer folks to get 10% off. Clean your list, protect your sender reputation, and watch your campaigns perform better than ever. You owe it to your mailing list. Next up, authenticate your emails. The absolute must do when we speak about email deliverability is to authenticate your emails. It's technical, it's boring, it's mandatory. You need to implement SPF, DayKim, and DMARC. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing these correctly because I usually read these abbreviations and don't say them out loud. And despite how these acronyms sound, they're actually your email's best friends. SPF tells ISPs which servers can send emails on your behalf. DKIM adds a digital signature to your emails and DMARC tells ISPs what to do if something goes wrong. Together, they build trust with ISPs, improving your chances of hitting the inbox. There are plenty of tutorials out there on how to do this. Please don't skip this step because it sounds complex. This is an absolute must if you want to achieve good deliverability. By the way, if you're one of the 70% of people who are watching this video and you're not subscribed to my channel, now is a great time to hit that subscribe button. I only truly post valuable content and if you're enjoying this video, you'll enjoy other content as well. So go ahead and subscribe. There's no downside, you can unsubscribe anytime. Seed testing. 
One way to catch issues before they happen is to do seed testing. A seed list is a list of email addresses that you send emails to before you send them to your actual subscribers. Your seed list should have emails from all the various ISPs. That way you'll know your emails pass spam filters and display correctly on different devices. In short, your seed list will show you how your emails look in different email clients, just Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, uh, and so on, and in different browsers and on different devices. Traditionally, companies used employee email addresses for their seed lists. You can create a seed list by yourself, but you'll just need a ton of inboxes and apps to test it all yourself. That's why more and more companies turn to outsourcing this process to platforms that specialize in email testing and manage the list and run the tests, such as Litmus and Mailgun. Seed testing is a great way to check email deliverability, but just because your email lands in the inbox during a seed test doesn't actually guarantee the same result with your actual subscribers. Factors like subscriber engagement, list quality, and your sending volume can impact deliverability. And we're going to talk about all of those things in this video. Plus, each ISP treats emails differently based on sender reputation and content. So while seed tests are helpful, Real-time metrics like open rates, spam complaint rates, uh, and bounces give you a better idea of how your actual emails are performing. Monitor your Gmail deliverability with Google Postmaster tools. Now let's talk about Gmail deliverability. If you've got a large portion of your list using Gmail, and let's face it, most of us do, then Google Postmaster tools should be your new best friend. You might be thinking, doesn't my ESP like Clavio already give me this info? Well, yes and no. Your ESP can show the overall metrics like bounce rates, open rates, and spam complaints, but Gmail's filters are an entirely different game. Google Postmaster Tools gives you direct insight into how Gmail views your domain reputation. It tells you whether Gmail thinks your domain is good, medium, low, or bad. Once you've set it up, you'll have access to data that goes beyond what your ESP offers. You'll see things like domain and IP reputation. Is Gmail about to start filtering your emails to spam? You'll know before it happens. Uh, you'll also know about spam complaint rates. Track how often your emails are being reported as spam by Gmail users. And again, Gmail does not pass this information to email service providers. And you'll be able to verify the authentication process, whether all those acronyms that you've set up are all working correctly. If your Gmail reputation starts to slip, maybe because too many people mark your emails as spam or engagement is dropping, Postmaster Tools gives you that crucial heads up. From there, you'll clean up your list, adjust your strategy, and take control before things spiral. Next up, dedicated link tracking. Now let's talk about dedicated link tracking. If you've ever hovered over a link in an email and noticed a bunch of random letters and numbers in the URL, that's the default click tracking from your email platform. It works, but it doesn't exactly scream trustworthy to your ISPs. With dedicated click tracking, you can customize the links in your emails to show your domain instead of the generic tracking domain from your email platform. Using your own domain for click tracking aligns your entire email strategy and mailbox providers take notice. Having consistent domain usage across your sending domain and tracking links can improve your overall email reputation and deliverability. This process is also kind of technical and you'll be able to find a tutorial or instructions by just Googling um, dedicated click tracking and the name of your email service provider. But I absolutely recommend that you do that, especially before Black Friday and Cyber Monday season when your sending volume is going to increase. Okay, quick stop. Is this content helpful so far? If so, I would be so grateful if you like this video and write a short comment underneath. Let me know what's most helpful so far in the video and what you've learned and what else you'd like me to cover. Thank you so much. Only send emails to people who opted in. I debated whether to start the video with this section or not because of how important this is. This should go without saying, but let me say it just in case. Always, and I mean, Always get explicit consent from your subscribers before sending them any emails. This is called permission-based marketing. It's not just the rules. Your audience needs to want your emails. This boosts engagement and keeps you out of spam. Also, regularly clean your list. Over time, people lose interest. It's natural. Regularly clean your email list by removing inactive and unengaged subscribers. I have a separate video with a tutorial on how to build a sunset flow specifically to do that. So check it out. It's linked on the screen right now. And a friendly reminder, don't use purchased email lists. That's a direct ticket to the spam folder.
Encourage whitelisting. Want to go the extra mile? Encourage your subscribers to whitelist your email address. When someone subscribes, ask them to add your email to their contact list. If they do that, the simple step tells ISPs that your emails are wanted, which can significantly improve your deliverability. Pro tip, replies to marketing emails are an incredibly positive signal for ISPs, so you can encourage subscribers to reply to your welcome email. Craft engaging and relevant content. Now, a few tips on the actual content that you send to your subscribers. Number one, segment your audience. Sending to your entire list as opposed to segments is a bad practice that always leads to less engagement and going to spam over time. Instead, segment your audience based on things like demographics, purchase history, or engagement levels. By sending the right message to the right person, you're more likely to see higher open and click-through rates and less likely to end up in the spam folder. By the way, I have a couple of videos on segmentation that are very recent on this channel. I'll link them on the screen. Go check them out. I truly recommend segmentation to everybody, and that's one of the uh, weak sides of most of the brands that we talk to, so go check out segmentation. Avoid spam trigger words. You know the ones. Free, guarantee, act now, in all caps. These can raise red flags. Instead, focus on clear and honest subject lines that reflect the content of your email. Keep it real and keep it relevant. And on a related note, avoid misleading subject lines. Using deceptive or misleading subject lines, such as those that imply urgency or misrepresent the content, can lead recipients to mark your emails as spam. Clear and honest subject lines are essential for maintaining trust. And again, I do have a separate video specifically on subject lines, so go check that out as well. Maintain a consistent sending schedule. Consistency is key. Establish a regular sending pattern for your email campaigns. Whether it's once a week or once a month, stick to that schedule. Sudden spikes in your email volume can make ISP suspicious, which could send your emails straight to spam. Warm up your IP address. If you're using a new IP address, don't rush it. Gradually increase your sending volume to build a positive sender reputation. It's like making a good first impression. You want to start strong and build trust over time. And a little pro tip again, timely for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday season. Even if you're not using a brand new IP address, sudden spikes in sending volume are still seen as suspicious by ISPs. For example, if you've been sending your campaigns to about 50,000 people per campaign and you're planning to send to 70,000 or more per campaign during the holiday season, you need to ramp up gradually. You can't just go from 50K to 70K email recipients in one day. So make sure that you plan ahead. Data-driven timing. Analyze when your audience is most likely to open and engage with your emails. If you use Klaviyo, they have an awesome feature that I love called Smart Send Time, which I honestly don't see enough brands use. I have a separate video where I do cover it as well, so go check that out if you need more help with it. Provide an easy unsubscribe option. Always make it easy to unsubscribe. If somebody doesn't want your emails anymore, give them an easy way to unsubscribe. If it's hard for them to find that unsubscribe link, you know what they're gonna do. They're gonna hit that spam button. You can also allow subscribers to choose the type and frequency of emails they receive. By giving them control, you can reduce unsubscribe rates and spam complaints as recipients will receive content that aligns with their interests and behaviors. Monitor your sender reputation. Finally, make sure that you monitor your sender reputation and deliverability regularly. Track your engagement metrics. Keep an eye on your open rates, click-through rates, bounce rates, and spam complaints. If your engagement is low, it might be time to tweak your content or strategy. If you use Klaviyo, make it your habit to go to the deliverability page and check your score and how it changes over time. It's important to understand that this is the score that Klaviyo gives you based on your engagement metrics, and it's not an external score assigned by ISPs. For that, you have Google Postmaster, which we covered in this video. The reports page can offer a lot of insights too, so make sure that to review that in addition to your deliverability score. That's it for today. Thank you for sticking around till the end. Now you've got the tools to keep your emails from going to spam and improve your deliverability rates. Remember, email marketing is a marathon. It's a true marathon, it's not a sprint. So keep refining your strategy and watching those results roll in. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and drop a comment if you have any questions. I will see you in the next video.